Hey Crusaders, today I thought I'd do a video telling you of my favourite books of the year so far since June has been and gone and we are more than halfway through the year. This was really exciting for me because I got to look through my Goodreads reading challenge and look at all the books I've already read and I'm like oh yes that one was amazing, that one too and that one and I've come out with six books that I think are the best ones that I've read so far this year. There were a lot of contenders, I've had a great year in terms of how much I've loved the books but these ones stood out in my mind. So I'm actually going to start this video off with the first book that I read this year and that is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I loved this book because of the characters and because of the writing and just the beautiful story and what it told. Now this is a very popular book and when I read it in January it was very hyped at that time but I'm glad that I did because I think that it definitely lived up to the hype. This is a historical fiction, if you don't know, um, set in France and Germany from two different perspectives, a little boy and a little girl. The little girl it goes blind and it's about her journey and it's about the boys and it's lovely and it just paints such a beautiful picture. I think the thing I liked the most was Anthony Doerr's writing style. Such beautiful descriptions, I just got carried away in his words and this was just a lovely book to read in winter. So my first book is because of the writing. The second book I have to talk about is The Blazing World by Siri Husbert. I again really adored this book. I think I read this one in January too. Um, actually I think January was a good reading month in terms of favourites for me. So this was long listed for the Man Booker Prize in 2014 and I got to it in January of 2015. I got to it at just the right time I think. The cover is absolutely spectacular. This is about an artist who never really gets much attention in the New York art scene because she's a woman and they just aren't treated the same and it's not fair so she sets up three solo exhibits under the names of different men and they get so much attention and then something goes wrong she has to tell the truth no one believes that she could be the person behind all of those it's told like a report put together by someone so as you're reading it someone has edited all of Harriet's the artist's notebooks together and witness statements and they've made it into some kind of collective journal to tell her story but also Siri Husfurt has written that this there was this journal blah and it just it feels real it feels like this could have happened it's so clever I still can't get it out of my head I really want to reread it actually the next book I have here will come as absolutely no surprise and that is The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien I read this I think also in January. I think I had a very good reading month in January. Or maybe it was February. Was it Jan No, I think it was January. Anyway, The Lord of the Rings. And um, clearly this was going to be on here. I have done a kind of weird discussion about it that I'll link below. I don't really need to say what it's about. I don't really know how I'd begin with that actually, you know. A great quest for a little hobbit um, and a lot more than that besides. I think my advice for anyone who's scared to pick this up would be to pick it up. It's not as difficult as you may think it is. He, Tolkien wrote it so that people could read it and enjoy it. It's a very fun fantasy. There's a lot more than in the movies and it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Once you get sucked into the writing, I'm telling you, you won't want to come out of it. The next favourite I have is 112263 by Stephen King. I think a thing that some of these books have in common is that they're quite big. Big books. I like big books. This one is here because of how readable it was and how uh, addictive it was and just a great thriller and I don't read a lot of them and this one is a lot of people's favourite um, book 
and I can see why it's about the JFK assassination and someone who has a chance to go back in time and stop the JFK assassination and what would happen if he did but there's so much more around that because he's got to wait five years to do it so it's all about the past time travel different events there's some love in here it's just got everything and it's Stephen King and I say it again but he's just addictive to read and fly through and so much fun and so if you are looking for a Stephen King that isn't horror this is a good one to read I'm telling you this is the one you need to read the next book is also over 500 pages this is the fourth book in this favorites video that's over 500 pages and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Now this is on here because Jane is such an amazing heroine. I love her so much. She's honestly one of my favourite characters. And the characters in this book, I mean, and, and Mr. Rochester, I know some people don't like him. He definitely has his flaws, but I like him. I like him. He's troubled. No. It's a very good classic romance, it's good, I like it, and I was so happy that I liked it because I did not like Wuthering Heights. But Charlotte Bronte, Charlotte Bronte, you're alright, I'm going to read more by you. Jane Eyre, one of my new favourite books of all time. Do you want to know what it's about? Apparently I'm not really telling you. And the last book I have here is a recent one. And a very, like, surprising one to be on this list, but here it is anyway, and that's a man called Uwe, Uwe, or I say Ove, but I have been told that it's pronounced Uwe, I can't do it, I can't do Swedish. Anyway, this is Swedish, if you hadn't already guessed by that. And it's lovely, it's on here because it made me cry, it made me laugh, a lot, it made, gave me all the feels. I love Ove. I love Ove so much. This is such a lovely book and I just want everyone to read it. I've done a review so I'll also link that down below. But basically he's a grumpy old man and he just doesn't seem to like anything or anyone and then a foreign family move in across the road and he has tires and suddenly he's driving everyone everywhere and people are doing everything wrong and it's just... I'm still not emotionally ready to talk about it. And I don't like to say too much about this book because I don't want to give anything away. So that's all I'm going to say. But if anyone has read it and wants to discuss it, then I'd love to. So those are my favourites of the year so far. I also want to give some honourable mentions to Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury because classic science fiction also gave that one five stars. I also want to give an honourable mention to Golden Sun by Pierce Brown because it ripped my heart out and I was left thinking about it for about a month afterwards and I'm still not fully over it and so yeah, that has to have a mention too and you may notice that I haven't put any of the Nightrunner series on here, that is just because it's a series, you know, it's it's one of my favourite series, clearly the books are my favourites, but this is about standout books on their own, and The Night Runners is more of just my favourite series ever. You may also notice that there's not an Ellen Kushner book on this list. I was quite surprised too, but the two Ellen Kushner books that I read this year I gave four stars to, which means that they can't be on this list, even though I enjoyed them a lot. Thank you for watching this video, what are your favourites of the year so far, and until next time, look in the shadows guys!